Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back from another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. Now, if you've been monitoring this series for the last little while, you'll realize that we haven't added an animal in a little bit of time. Well, that animal edition denial will be going away as of today's session. Folks, I'm sure the thumbnail and the title have given it away, but I still can't help myself going into a session when we're about to add a new animal to just try and riff on its name. I can't help myself. I apologize. And you know what? I'm not even sorry about it. It's just the way things are around these parts. Folks, joking aside, we're adding a new animal today. I've been sort of talking about this for a while uh, in in sort of not, not even in code, but in... Uh, I've been a bit, I guess, sneakier about it than I really need to be. That wasn't really my intent, but I wasn't entirely prepared to commit to one of three animals, actually, that I was kind of juggling between in terms of the next animal edition pick. Uh, but as sort of time went on, as this uh, this weekend went on, and uh, as, you know, I was mulling over some of my plans, I, uh, I had a certain, or sorry, a, a sudden, I should say, uh, shift in vision. And, uh, and because of that, I got really, well, maybe, maybe I got a little too enamored by a certain plan I have. And, uh, and as a result of that, we are adding what we are adding today. Um, <laughs> you'll see what my shift in, uh, in sort of vision and, and plan and direction, uh, were. I'm sure I'll talk about it in the time lapse itself. The order of business today is of course going to be kicking things off with a read of the Zoopedia entry. Uh, we want to obviously familiarize ourselves with the new animal to come, and then we're going to dive into the time lapse shortly thereafter, and then we're going to do some management uh, beyond that. So that's the plan for the day. There isn't too much to mention as far as an introduction is concerned. Um, I don't want to I don't want to bog us down with too much management stuff first, but we will sort of like add all the management stuff, you know, as it regards to or with regards to adding a new animal uh, after the time lapse. Of course, I think it makes more sense for an animal addition animal. Sorry, animal edition episode. Words. I'm, I'm really excited to get into this time lapse, so I guess I'm fumbling over my words a little bit over here. I apologize. Uh, but uh, but yeah, really excited for our work today. Uh, really excited for what's to come in the very near future as well. Like I said, I've got three... I was sort of juggling between three animals. Actually, if I'm completely honest with myself, four animals uh, I was juggling between. And, uh, and I've got one picked out, and it is going to be in this region over here. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm quite excited to see how this hopefully ends up working out uh it might not it might it, i'll be honest it might go terribly wrong but sometimes perseverance uh can uh, can do the trick right like i saw a lot of your comments with regards to our circumstances over here uh some of you said that it started to grow on you or you had some suggestions and some ways in which we could improve it of course the the space isn't complete yet um so that's something to keep in mind but some of you pointed out that there are some better pieces that i could use uh apart from or rather instead of these uh these wooden floor pieces so that was thank you very much for that there are definitely some uh options uh, you know, here and there, the breeze block seems to be a um, not so popular choice. And that's, you know, I was, it, it's a tough one to get into. Uh, many of y'all like the shapes and stuff like that. And that's great to hear. Uh, I've got some plans. I've got, I've got some plans for this area. And then with your suggestions and your feedback as well, I will be refining this quite a bit. But I didn't want to do that today because I feel like we've spent uh, too much time away from, uh, from adding animals. We'll come back over here. And I think like I mentioned last session, what we'll do is uh, at some point in the very near future, we will wrap this and uh, this up in like one time lapse. I think that would be a nice beauty pass to just get some of these stations done. Really liking, I mean, I, I really quite like these like, we have these like landmarks, you know, we got this, we've got this. This is actually, this. I'm so glad we redid the stripes, honestly. I'm so pleased. Every time I fly past this, I'm just like, that was 100% worth it, 110% worth it. And sometimes it's good to just, Sometimes it's about perseverance. Sometimes it's going back and and you know, course correcting, I suppose. Uh, but but yeah, very very pleased with how uh, how how this has ended up. Honestly, yeah, it looks legit. I'm really pleased with that. Except only recently have I learned that this isn't necessarily the only type of uh, pattern. Oh, I've spotted zebras are a thing, and uh, honestly, the whole my 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 life has been a lie. Evidently, uh, look up spotted zebras if you you have never seen them before. They are that's a very very beautiful thing to gaze upon. Let me put it that way. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be coming back to that. We'll be coming back to this uh, all together in one beauty pass is my thinking. Uh, but what I was getting at looking back over there was that, uh, <laughs> again, I'm taking a bit of a chance over here. It might not go perfectly at first. 
but uh, I have I have relative confidence that uh, if it doesn't go perfectly at first, then uh, we will uh, you know we'll we'll adjust and and course correct and and get it looking great by the end of it all. I want to mention as well, by the way, sorry, really quickly that uh, I got a lot of feedback with regards to doing a time lapse only session. I appreciate that feedback. Like I always say, it really helps me make decisions on the channel, uh, and it seems that the vast majority of you who had an opinion uh, on the topic, at least thus far. Uh, were of the volition that they're nice, uh, however they shouldn't be the norm, and that's great because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it's a nice way to kind of like get something done, to sit down and like get her done, uh, but obviously it won't be the norm because I do still want to spend time with animals, I do still want to spend time doing management stuff, uh, but it is good to see that uh, kind of like we're all on the relatively uh, similar page, I suppose is a way to put it. Uh, so yeah, let's not waste any more time. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our Nile monitor. Now you'll remember that we actually have, now hopefully I remember when the time comes, that we actually have uh, one Nile monitor, a female Nile monitor as a reward from ages ago now. Age, this might have actually been the first reward animal we received if I'm not mistaken. Ages ago. Maybe. Uh, maybe it was the second, but it was, it was up there. Uh, and it's got pretty good stats, 83s across the board, that's not bad at all. So what we'll probably want to do is uh, if we take a look at uh, the animal market, we get ourselves a male, right, um, Nile monitor. Where are you, buddy? There you are. Doesn't hurt to look early, right? Obviously, there's there's options. Oh my god, okay. Let's flip, the, flip the pricing. Um, there's lots of options, actually, so this is good, at least... Well, I say that, but remember what happened last time where I was like, oh, there's so many options. We don't have to rush. We don't have to worry. And then remember what happened to that. Oh, some good, some good variety, though. Some good options. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, the, like, you would think the albinos would naturally have lower, um, like, trait caps. Though 83% seems to be the highest some of these go. Oh, there we go. There's the 92s and the 100s. This is not bad for 70. The far over here. Ooh, 75, 83, double 100. All right, all right. Like this, 70 conservation credits is not all that much at all. And these are decent. Ooh, Omer over here, not bad either. The lead. Um, well, yeah, these guys are all... I mean, honestly... Oh, okay, there we go. I don't think I'm gonna... Ah, oh, but of course, it's a female. We don't need a female now monitor. We already have one. We need a male now monitor. That's, that's, that's unfortunate. Of course, it would tease me like that with the extremely high stats. Oh, Nisar is not bad. Not bad at all, Nadir. Okay. Gibran is actually pretty good as well. Amara, I like as well. Better balance, I guess. Wammar. Those bottom two, it's not that they don't matter, but they're a bit more variable, right? Maybe let's go with Amar over here. Sure. Let's go ahead and adopt you from Mag Zoo. Why not? And we will... Uh, I wonder if they need to go to quarantine, if the uh, reward, if like the gifted animals, the rewarded animals need to go to a uh, quarantine as well. Probably, right? Better safe than sorry. Let's go ahead and assign both of them. Let's get you in here. And uh, let's go ahead and get Amila. Funnily enough, like it's kind of funny, like, I don't know. I don't know if these guys should have 100% stats across the board, you know, but that's what I was going to say. I was like, I feel like these guys should have hundreds across the board. Really make them special. Really make them special. But at the same time, I say that, but I don't know if I believe it. You know what I mean? Okay, over to animal storage. We have our female mile monitor. Yep. Move you over to quarantine as well. Good stuff. He's been waiting a long time. A long, long time. All right. Uh, let's get ready to get to work over here. Let's take a look at our uh, Zoopedia entry. So the Nile Monitor, Uranus Niloticus. Let's see what you did there. Interesting. Uh, data deficient, actually. Wow, we don't know their population in the wild. That's always fascinating to me. Obviously, it makes sense. I mean, <laughs> the world is a massive place, <laughs> right? It's uh, it's as big as it's as big as the world. Um. And there's just so much we just don't know, and it fascinates me. What's the famous? Uh, it's like uh, we know more about our solar system than we know about all the, uh, the 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 oceans, like the depths of the ocean, something like that, something along the lines of of that. The idea being, we we know more about you know what's out there in our solar system at least than we know about like what's on here, 
Uh, so it doesn't surprise me actually, but it's still, it, it, I say it doesn't surprise me, but still it is, uh, it's still, it makes you realize every time you see something like data deficient or population unknown, you go like, yeah, I mean, yeah, we don't know. It's, it's, uh, I love it. I love that feeling. Uh, the Nile monitor or Varanus Niloc Niloticus, sorry, is a large species of reptile that lives in the non-desert area of sub-Saharan Africa. They have also been introduced to the USA, specifically California and Florida, where they are regarded as an invasive species. I would like to know the history behind that. Why were they introduced to the USA? Why were they brought in as an invasive species? Was it an accident? Was it like somebody just wanted a pet and then it went out of control? That's curious. There's a story there. Now, I, I hope it's in the fun facts. See, that's the kind of thing I would like to see expanded upon in the fun facts when the time comes. Uh, Nile monitors much prefer environments close to water tending to live near rivers. Excellent. Both sexes look the same and are between 48 and 88 inches long, with more than half of this length being their tail. Adults tend to be brown to green with dark stripes on their body and yellow spots on their legs and head. Meanwhile, juveniles are black with bright yellow spots. Okay. Oh, okay. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Interesting. Black with bright yellow spots. So this is a juvenile, I guess. And then they become brown to green with dark stripes and yellow spots. Oh, no. This. I guess this could also just be an adult... I see, so the, the black, it's almost like they get sun faded. The black becomes like a brownish, greenish kind of tint. That's hilarious. Uh, the species is not endangered, but they are exploited in certain areas of Africa where they are hunted for their skin and meat. Their body fat is also believed to have healing properties in traditional medicine, although there's no scientific evidence for this. Okay, so now this is where things get kind of weird, right? Um, okay, uh, what do they mean by exploited? They're hunted for their skin and meat. Okay, Fine, but so are a lot of things. The, I feel like when you use the word exploit, there is a negative connotation to it, right? Like, yes, you can mean it like, oh yeah, we exploit the 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 the. I don't, you you can you can say it positively, I, I guess. I don't know actually. Exploit just typically has a negative connotation to it. We hunt all kinds of animals across the world. What is what is the difference in hunting? Uh, the Nile monitor for its skin, meat, and medicinal prop, uh, like properties. What is the difference between doing that and, let's say, hunting reindeer or uh, deer or I, I don't know anything? Like, you know, throw 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 an animal out there that we hunt. I don't mean trophy hunting. Do not get me wrong. That stuff. That's don't like. Don't even. Let's not mix up conversations here. Let's not conflate two things. I'm talking about hunting for uh, to 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 use the animal hunting to. To eat to make hides or what have you or what whatever it might be um and and for medicine like what what why is this it does it always refer to it as exploitation like if we take a look at the uh reindeer as a good example i suppose like do they uh they mention over here but reindeer being tracked and monitored uh, so i know i'm being introduced to make reindeer sport hunting sustainable I mean, hunting reindeer is apparently like like see this is so much such such a such a positive connotation even it's like oh yeah reindeer reindeer sport hunting uh, is being made sustainable and I understand there's a cultural uh, connection to uh, to this we we had this conversation when we were doing Elitsu North we talked about this I was made very aware of uh, an entire culture and people that rely on the reindeer as a way of life which was very fascinating for me but uh, I wonder like is there another good example of uh, of an animal that is hunted um, in that way, I just can't think of something off the top of my head as a point of comparison. There is just some I want to know. There's got to be a re okay. Either there is or isn't a reason for choosing the term exploit, as opposed to saying the species is not endangered and they are hunted in certain areas of Africa for their skin and meat. Like you know what I mean? I'm I know I'm belaboring this point maybe a little bit too much, uh, but it is an interesting word choice, and I would like to know why it's considered exploitation. Um, so if you know, if you have some insight, please share. Uh, I love reading through the comments uh, always, and I, I especially love it when there's like insight to this kind of stuff because, I, I, you know, I, I believe in always learning, so I'd love to know. Uh, but anyway, we know that we can put on some stuff for uh, for, for traditional medicine and, and whatnot as a uh, as a uh, some of those education boards. Anyway, moving on from this, I just, I don't, I just don't know. It's, you know, it just throws me off. Just... It's like, why, what, like, what, uh, what, 
where is that line? And am I just reading too much into the word exploit? Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about thinking it has a negative connotation. Anyway, they are of course, <laughs> uh, you know, monitoring the Nile as it were, and then and everything down south over here. So yeah, sub-Saharan Africa, the non-desert parts, fair enough. Obviously, they are tropical and grassland. I say obviously, but obviously it's not obvious. I only say that because we're familiar with some of these regions. So tropical and grassland, which is excellent. It goes with what I had in mind. Uh, if we take a look at the species data, group size is one to three, up to one male, up to two females. Oh, gosh. I had a feeling that I should check this before I, um, before I went in through the market because there were those extremely high quality, extremely cheap, uh, female options that I fear I have now lost and had I just read first that's why the order of operations is so important if I had just read first like I was originally planning on doing would have had that uh, oh, with Sal over here I think you were the one no uh, no inbreeding issues from chilled chilled Crete chilled Croet? I'm not sure how to say that Let's go ahead and move you over to the quarantine as well. I'm, I'm glad I checked. Watch, I've missed something, and it turns out I've adopted a, a male over here. I don't think so. I think we're I think we're fine. But knowing my luck. Please tell me I I feel like I dropped them into a into an enclosure. Yeah, I think I dropped them into Oh yeah, you see, I did. Not what I meant. Over here, please. Glad I noticed that little highlight it's funny the the, the hit boxes on in this game are, are, are absolutely wild sometimes uh all right so you are all going to quarantine yes all right cool <laughs> that would have been bad i don't know what habitat i think it's probably this habitat over here uh and and yes these guys and these guys still need a name they have a name i have names picked out but when we do a beauty pass in this area is when i'm going to apply those names because uh, uh, I've got some plans for, for that. All right, back over here. So one to three, uh, up to one male, up to two females. Male bachelor group size, one to two. Female is one to three. Fair enough. All this excluding juveniles, of course. No dominant system. Mating system is promiscuous. Relation with humans is confident. And guests cannot enter the habitat. I think we know what that means. Seven feet long. 6.25 feet in the case of females. Life expectancy is 15 years across the board. Weight is 17.5 pounds across the board. Sexual maturity at four years. Sterility at death. Number of offspring per mating event is 2 to 10. Oh, so these guys are going to be like the uh, the gurriel and whatnot. And even like the saltwater crocs, I guess. Or just like babies upon babies. All right, fair enough. They go pretty cheaply. So we're probably releasing them to the wild. I don't know. We'll see the conservation credit uh, return on these guys. 10-month gestation and incubation period. Or slash incubation period, I should say. 24-month 20 month interbirth and difficult reproduction in captivity. I don't know the last time I saw difficult reproduction in captivity. That's... uh. That's neat. We'll see. We'll see what comes of it. Social needs. Nile monitors are solitary animals and prefer to be alone, much like this sentence. That's it. That's all we have. Nothing about really. That's it. <laughs> Interesting. Do we really know so little about the Nile monitor? Have we not been able to monitor the Nile monitor? Reproduction. After tracking a female by scent, a male will follow her until one of two scenarios: either she allows him to mate with her, or he gives up. I just uh, there's some, there's something funny about how some of these are phrased. I quite they're quite entertaining. Uh, if two or more males meet when tracking females, then they will fight, and a smaller monitor will yield to the larger one. Now, do they fight, or is that the rule? You just kind of like know you're not the alpha in the situation, and you leave. Anyway, having mated, a female will carry her eggs with her until the rainy season. After a rainfall, she will dig a nest in the soft ground before covering her eggs over. And these will incubate for 3 to 10 months, depending on the environmental conditions. The newly hatched young must dig their way out of the nest and may need to wait for it to rain to be able to get out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Although some mothers do return to their nests to help. Oh, even more interesting. Okay. After hatchlings emerge, they live independently and reach sexual maturity at 3 to 4 years old. Man, can you imagine if... It's, it's, it's kind of a shame, really. Can you imagine getting some of these animals as DLC and having them have, like, custom... Uh, uh, reproduction animations and stuff like custom, like I would love to like have the Nile monitor lay these eggs in a space within their enclosure and then the babies when they're born they're not born you know just by appearing next to the mother but they are born from that little um, nest or what have you uh, that would be and, and just to see like I understand when they were you know when you're first making the game there's a lot of animals in the game everybody 
maybe can't, you know, maybe there aren't the resources to dedicate to individual birth animations for each animal. That's perfectly cool. I understand the limitations of production and we all should. There's a limited budget. You can only do so much and it's important to prioritize the right things. And as far as the hierarchy of priorities are concerned, that animation slash I should say those animations aren't the top priority. But I'm glad that with the DLC, we're getting a little bit of that. We're getting like you know, the koala animation, the kangaroo uh, birth animations. Um, I don't know if we got any with the aquatic animals. So we did start getting some different things with the aquatic animals as well. I would love to see some of this stuff get re-explored down the line. I don't know if that's the plan at all, but how great would it be to have some of this stuff be a bit more involved? Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Research status, of course, we have nothing, but we have got all of their uh, habitat enrichments. And that's the other thing I keep mentioning. I do wish each animal had at least one unique uh, habitat or feeding like enrichment item. Um... Interspecies enrichment, of course, there is none. Maybe throw a couple of humans in there. The Nile monitors will be happy. The humans, not so much. Get a, get a hit in there or something. And uh, we do have these world records. Now, one day, I wonder I wonder if I don't want to, like, chase some... Uh... Oh, hey! Oh, hello! Yo! Oh, no, that's just in my zoo. Okay, whatever. That was exciting for a second. What is this? Oh, some hacks going on over here. Oh, hold on, what is this? Largest ever. Largest alive. Largest in your zoo. It's all the same. So why is why is my what what is what is this? I was gonna say I got so excited to see like Elite Zuko is here, yay! Except right, it's just in my zoo. Cares about that, and I care about that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Good zoo name. Um, yeah, it would be nice to try and try and do something. Like, but yeah, this is a little unfair. It's like you have to beat the highest number, but these two have the exact same number, and they're well, I guess one's alive and one's not. I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like this system doesn't exactly work as it uh, as it maybe uh, like what is this? Maybe should. Oldest in my zoo is two point two years old. What? How are you getting a third? What? Anyway. I'm letting myself get distracted and I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and dive on in, folks. I think it is time uh, to get to work over here. I mean, this will work nicely is my hope. Just taking a quick look around over here. Yeah, I think it'll work nicely. Look what I have planned will... Uh, hopefully it'll work nicely. <laughs> taking a bit of a risk over here, but as I often say, what is life without risks? Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, this is... Quite the time lapse. Uh, I'm not going to be living in uh, in denial over here. I'm going to be very honest. I did not get what I wanted to get done done today. There were a few things that uh, <laughs> that kind of got in the way. Um, you should take a guess and see if you can predict what at least one of them is going to be. I, I get the feeling that some of you will be able to guess. So pause right now if you want to guess. And think about it for a second and guess what might be one of the things that slowed me down significantly with today's time lapse, right? Let's take a moment, make you guess. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about it when we get there. But point being, yeah, things did not go as smoothly as I'd uh, hoped. Uh, and I guess that goes, that's kind of part and parcel with, uh, with trying something new and trying something different. But before we even get to the something new and something different, we have to deal with something a little familiar. That is the water. And if you guessed the water, you guessed correctly. I don't know why I do this to myself. <laughs> Every time. I was very close to being like, no, you know what, we just we'll we'll ignore it, we'll we'll take it, we'll do a shortcut method of like making it look like the water is continuous even though it's not. We've got enough uh, water, you know, uh like cleaning facilities and stuff in the area. It's not a big deal, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and you'll see me actually consider that at a point in time, uh, but uh, but ultimately I, I couldn't let myself do that. So what I was doing for you know a couple moments there is I was kind of separating the uh, segments of this uh, of this flowing river or what have you, and trying to figure out exactly where the problem area lay. And I was able to narrow it down again. This is a method we learned with uh, with Bangkok Night Market right over at Litsu North. This is a method we learned back there, and because of that method, I was able to relatively quickly determine exactly where the problem was. And the problem was at the uh, the uh, boat stop, boat station, the the dock, whatever you want to call it, uh, by the giraffes. Um, so that was unfortunate. That was unfortunate. 
Uh, I realize now, actually, as I'm looking at this space... Oh, interesting. So I'm actually going to adjust this because I was like, uh, I, I, I didn't want to do any shortcut methods. I didn't want to like, I didn't want to be, for lack of a better word, I didn't want to be lazy about it. Uh, as much as I was excited to execute what I had planned, I didn't want to be lazy about it. And so I decided to, all right, let's sit down, let's fix this once and for all right now, and then we'll come back to it some other time. But I just realized actually that my my new uh, layout, my new set of connections to the, uh, to the boat ride are different than what they were before. It's not the end of the world. It still works just fine. Uh, but it's, so it was only now that I realized that I didn't do the exact same connections. And that's fine. As long as it works, it works. And, and that's all that matters. It's not drastically different. The experience is still the same. And as you can see, maybe you caught a, caught a, caught a glimpse of it there. But we are, in fact, able to now... Um, uh, we're able to now put the water down. And now that we can put the water down, I can move on from it. I don't have to care about it anymore. And I can you know, work to my heart's content and I can make adjustments without ever having to worry about like, oh, well, this isn't working. That's not working. So like, yes, I, it's it's a bother or it was a bother, but it, it was well worth it because now we have something which is, yes, a little complicated, a little unexpected for the game systems, I suppose, but also something that we can bend to our will as it were and we can and modify as needed without having to worry about it. Anyway, so that's that taken care of. Now we're actually working on the enclosure and that took a fair bit of time. I mean, I know it's a time lapse. It doesn't feel that way, but you know, it took a fair bit of time. Um, so yeah, the enclosure, what I want to do over here, I'm really excited for this, like I was saying earlier, and I'll mention this afterwards as well, uh, I want to actually uh, experiment with something, I want to do something that uh, I've pretty much never done before, more or less, uh, yeah, more or less, uh, I want to build a reptile house, I don't know if I'll be adding um, other uh, like exhibits, yeah, ex exhibit animals as well. I don't know if that's the plan necessarily, uh, but for the Nile monitors themselves, I wanted to build a, uh, a structure, like an actual enclosed um, enclosure, I guess. <laughs> yeah, an, an enclosed uh, enclosure. I wanted to put it in a building. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to put a little, little, little reptilian visual motif over there in the water but that's besides the point i, I wanted to build something that uh, again like I i've not done before i wanted to experiment with something new i wanted to uh, try and build a uh, uh, like an indoor enclosure because we've talked about it previously a fair bit like oh you know it's something i haven't really done and uh, uh y'all have remarked on it i've remarked on it myself it's like yeah that's a good point i've not really done um indoor enclosures uh not at elitsu north not elitsu south we've we've, we've like been indoor adjacent at most i would say uh, so i thought this was a great opportunity to, to build an interesting space and what we would do is we would have like this like rainforest kind of vibe on the inside so you can picture it being a bit more well not i shouldn't say rainforest tropical sort of vibe is what i meant to say on the inside so you can kind of picture the uh you can you can kind of picture the climate of it and whatnot uh but in order to build it you know i was trying to figure out like well what would make an interesting shape what would be an interesting approach uh you know visually how would we maybe you know do something compelling something that's landmark-esque, landmark-ish, that would stand out, but obviously, you know, if it's going to stand out, we need to make sure that it's, uh, it's compelling to look at. Uh, and so, you know, I mean, in my humble opinion, there's, uh, there's nothing quite like a dome. Domes are fantastic, they're beautiful things. Uh, and so I was like, oh, let's do, like, a, like, a nice domed structure. Why don't we do a, a, a nice dome? We'll get some, like, uh, uh we'll, we'll get some nice kind of, like, you know, well, you saw my reference there from Late Zoo North. We'll get some nice hard edges, so it's it's actually possible in the game, and we'll we'll you know iterate as much as possible on the curvature so that it'll feel like a like a rounded dome. Um, and yeah, it'll be it'll be great. It'll be fantastic. And uh, yeah, that didn't go very smoothly. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is, folks. I don't know why I keep uh, throwing myself against the wall like this. I don't know. I also don't know where, why I struggle uh, so very much with uh, with some of the construction stuff. Uh, it, it is definitely my uh, like buildings, like like um, you know, like uh, when I say buildings, I mean using the like like trying to build. Well, well, yeah, buildings as opposed to things like. You know, I say that, but then I look back at our uh, our, our our villa train station by the gorillas, and I'm pretty, I'm very pleased with how that looks, actually. So I don't know, I don't know where the point of struggle is, and if I did, then I would be able to train it and practice it, and I would be able to get better at it. That's what I was hoping to do over here. And I was actually really pleased with how this was looking at first. I was like, oh, you know, this is actually working quite nicely. I I really like how this is looking. It's like this nice big forms, we'd have like a flat roof. I wouldn't do a full dome, I'd probably put a flat roof because I don't want it to be too large. 
Um, but yeah, like I was like, oh, this is a pretty good look. We would have it kind of like be a nice big space. But obviously, like I said, again, because it's such a big space, I want it to be like a, a dome that's cut off at the top. So it's not a full, uh, full rounded top. Um, and I was either going to make the dome, I was either going to make the whole thing inside this dome, or I was going to make that little, uh, little round section on the right that has a little footprint. I was going to make that the, uh, the, the, the dome area. So I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to execute it. Uh, but I, I had some plans and I, I built this thing and I got the glass panels in there and everything else. I was like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be a challenge, but you know, whatever challenge accepted, let's go ahead and, and, and execute on this challenge. And, uh, yeah, I just, I didn't, uh, I wasn't cooperating. It wasn't working out. I think, um, I think there's a lot, I think there's a lot to, uh, why I was not able to, uh, to, to A, accomplish this and B, garner the patience required to accomplish this. I was already feeling, uh, more than a little, uh, <laughs> frustrated at the water for sure uh and i mean all that doesn't matter it's all it's all irrelevant um but uh i was like struggling with this i was like maybe maybe this isn't the right idea but i'm like insistent that we can do this i just gotta figure it out and again if if y'all have any suggestions or anything like that then feel free to share i'm always open to uh to, to learning more techniques and, and approaches and whatnot but just something about like, look at that. Like, you know, if you look at it without looking closely at it, I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. I enjoy the colors, the shapes, the, the glass, the, all that. Like, I'm liking it. But the moment you look close, and maybe maybe I should just learn to ignore this, but like, the moment you look close, you see the little clipping and you, you see like the shadows being cast incorrectly. And you're just like, nah, it's not right. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be good. And it just doesn't feel good. And so I was like, all right, well, maybe, maybe I should just abandon this for now. You know, we'll come back to it because I, I still, again, like I said earlier, perseverance, right? I want to come back and try it properly. I want to give it the you know, good old college try, as they say. So I will be back to it. However, I wanted to make sure that this time lapse wasn't a fruitless one. I wanted to make sure we got something done. I wanted to get the animal in today. I didn't want to delay this episode. I was very close to being like, I might have to delay this episode because I won't have anything done. And I don't want people, you know, loading up an episode being like, oh boy, you know, we have a new episode. Let's see what gets done today. And it's just like, hey, yeah, this time lapse was, uh, so I think that marks the end. Like this right now marks the end of the regular time lapse length, which is why today's time lapse is a bit longer. But I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna release a video that has a time lapse where we accomplish literally nothing, where we just put down some path and that's it. Not a chance. I gotta do something here. Let's let's execute something. Let's get some ideas on the table. Uh, I was glad that I was able to share my thinking with regards to the dome and whatnot. But still, visually, it's nice to have something accomplished. So I thought, all right, let's, you know, let's put down some of the vegetation. Let's think about some of the shapes and the forms and the colors in this space. Let's see if there's planters and stuff that I wanted to use as well. I've been eyeing these for a while. I quite like their colors and their layers and whatnot. So you know, let's see how we're going to use these potentially. How are we going to have this exterior section behave? Are we going to do you know glass paneling and stuff like that? How are we going to... Yeah, I thought, okay, let's, let's at least get some of this stuff in here. Because these are important things as well. Uh, these are, in fact, they're, they're very important things. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, yeah, we made some progress. Uh, I, I was I was pretty, I'm going to be honest with you, I was pretty bummed out about uh, not being able to execute the dome. But like going into it, I was just like, I, I know I'm biting off more than I could chew. So I was kind of prepared for, uh, for it to not go smoothly, perfectly. But yeah, it, it, it went okay. I learned what doesn't work. And you got you to gotta fall so you can get up again, right? Um, but anyway, that, that aside, we've got uh, a couple of um, food stalls and drink stalls being put down as well. Get some of those vendors in here so we can... Uh, have guests come here for you know the food and drink if nothing else and have them spend some money and make some more money and that's that was the plan up over here uh anyway right we want to get some picnic benches and stuff up over here i'm very excited to see folks use this because uh you know whether that uh, that dome structure remains a dome structure or becomes a different kind of structure or whether the idea changes entirely this space is still probably one of my favorite spaces in the uh, entire zoo probably uh, i don't know for sure but it's hard to say every time i like this has been a long time coming this space a lot of really cool stuff and you can see me kind of like tuck this underground so it's like i'm not gonna be able to get to this today because there's still so much to do and uh and i want to spend the time to execute the dome and, or, or the structure i should say properly i don't want to rush it i don't want to just like get it done and then later be like yeah whatever it's done i'm moving on from it i i, I don't like that um it's not that's that's not my personal like preference i guess so i just tucked it away we'll get back to it later uh, and hopefully it'll work out if not we'll, we'll figure something out we always figure something out on the topic of figuring something out, we got to figure something out for up over here as well. It'll be an easy fix. Might just have to adjust the train a little bit. I want to try and make it a ramp. It might have to be stairs. And if it does have to be stairs, then we'll build a ramp separately uh, on the side to make sure we retain our kind of accessibility. Or actually what I might do is make one of those mini elevators uh, that are used for mobility devices. Um, 
uh, they're fairly common in Canada, at least. You'll see them in, like, malls and, and stores and stuff. But whenever it's, like, five or six or ten, like, stairs or so, like, ten steps or so, you, rather than have a, a separate, like, elevator in a metal, you know, box and a shaft and all that, you kind of just have, like, a platform. Well, it's still an elevator, technically. We just have a platform that you get onto, the doors close, and there's this, like, small, like, waist-height doors. Um, and then and then that kind of, like, takes you up and you roll off of it, uh, well, I might do something like that if we have to rely on stairs. But anyway, uh, getting some more vegetation down as well. Really liking the space. And again, I'm glad that the Nile monitor is what's going over here because then we can keep it kind of densely kind of packed and we can, we can add some more stuff over here. Uh, and, and again, I am really pleased with how that is looking. Like this is this stuff is coming together nicely. Uh, oh, and I was checking some more water stuff over here. It's, it's, it's coming together really nicely. There's just that one thing that I was hoping to accomplish uh, that unfortunately I was unable to. And it was also like kind of like for me, the big challenge uh, but we'll come back to it. We'll we'll take it head on uh, next session with the time lapse. I think we're going to try and complete this area with next session's time lapse. But as for this time lapse, it is more or less a time to say goodbye to it uh, as we add a few reads to cap things off today. Hope you enjoyed the time lapse. If you did or didn't, or if you have any thoughts or opinions of your own, feel free to share them down below. As always, it does make a very big difference in like how I approach things, as you very well know. But uh, as I was saying, for now, we are going back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse. And as you very well saw, and I'm sure as I touched on, that did not go as planned. <laughs> that did not go as planned. I will not go so far as to say that it went disappointingly, at least for me. I apologize if any of you were disappointed with uh, the, the proceedings there. Uh, but there was one major problem that we've had for a while that I was sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, very concerned about. Let's just leave it at that for now. Uh, and that was, of course, with regards to the, uh, the the water over here. We've had trouble with this water for a while. Uh, it definitely took up much more time than I would have liked uh, getting this whole water situation fixed. But now that it has been fixed, we're not going to have to worry about that uh, ever again. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Don't tell me. Oh, don't do this to me, game. There we go. Beautiful. I thought I'd done that, but maybe I'd must have made a mistake. Anyway, um, so we're never going to have to worry about the water situation again, which is great because that means I will be able to continue this water uh, up this way as well, as was my kind of original plan-ish. Not 100% sure if that's what I'm going to do, but uh, but I might do that. Uh, something to think about. But um, yeah, that, that took a lot of time. That took a, that took a lot of time. Uh, but apart from that, though, I'm very happy with how the pathing has all worked out and how it's all come together. Like, that's kind of working exactly how... You know, I was hoping for we're going to have this connect over this way. So there's a bit of a like, there's a good kind of set of loops and stuff going on. So hopefully guests will uh, will, will enjoy that. Uh, and, and down over here. Yeah, we have a bit of an issue right now with regards to cutting, connecting this up there. But there are a couple of ways I can tackle this. I and mean, we can always adjust the train and make sure this connects properly. We can also make this just be a bit of a rounded end over here or a square end. There's options. I'm not too worried about that. I'm not too fussed about that. Uh, of course, what I'm fussed about, what I'm worried about is the uh, the overarching uh, structure that I wanted to build, the overarching structure, I suppose, that I wanted to build uh, to, like, house this area. I'm struggling with that, as you saw, and honestly, I decided that, you know what, let's go ahead and build the overall kind of layout here. Let's get some of the vegetation and stuff here so we can see, uh, at least get an overall idea of how uh, some of it will uh, will look from some of these vantage points from, you know, down below and from up top over here as well. I particularly like, uh, where is that bench? This view over here from this bench, I think, is quite, uh, it's something special, I think. Uh, we'll have to Plug some gaps over here, I suppose, but you got the waterfall there, you got the waterfall here. I, I feel like there's some nice, um, you know, there's another kind of a, uh, what's it called? Like a postcard kind of a moment as soon as we kind of plug that gap. There you go. Oh, postcard moment. Uh, or, or area or shot or what have you. Uh, I'm like blending postcard with Kodak moment, if anybody, anybody watching remembers that. Um, but uh, yeah, that was certainly, certainly a challenging time lapse. I... I don't know why I decided to take that on. I got I got to figure out uh, I got to figure out domed structures better. We've done it in the past, the the glass dome at Elitsu North, uh, but it was a struggle and it was a struggle now as well. However, uh, you can see kind of the 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 plan, the idea I have in mind. It is going to be um, a, a, a housed structure. It's going to be a housed enclosure, if you will. There will be a structure around it. Um, but I'm sorry, I, I'm probably talking about stuff that I talked about during the time lapse. This is the struggle with like recording. And then doing the time lapse later, it's just a I, I gotta like figure something out there or something. I apologize for repeating my future past self. So let's uh, let's stay on task though. Uh, overall, point being, 
Yeah, a couple of uh, marks missed, I would say, which we'll take care of next session to finish this area off. As we always do, we need to have two time lapses for a, for a, for a habitat anyway, so I'm fine with that. Um, because overall, I'm very pleased with uh, with how this place looks and flows and moves, and ov obviously this uh, little uh, little motif here as well. Pretty like very very happy with it overall. Just a couple things that we'll uh, we'll sort out next session. So uh, I hope y'all are, uh, are, are 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 as satisfied with this as I am as of now, and hopefully next session we will sort of crank it up a notch and and and, and get it uh, get it done. I'm actually very curious to see. Scale is such a weird thing. It's just like I was so busy preoccupied building all this stuff, I didn't realize just how large I'd made this space for for one animal. We'll have to do more up over here potentially. Maybe get some more food and stuff. I was thinking we'd have another kind of exit up over here and do like another uh, food court or washrooms or something like that. On which note, down over here, I will need some of your name suggestions. We've got ourselves a pip shot smoothie, we've got ourselves a gulpy energy, and we've got ourselves a hot dog squad. I don't know why I felt like the hot dog and the long lizard kind of a thing. I just I couldn't help myself. Uh, we might actually get like I said more uh, up over here. We'll think about it. We'll look at we'll we'll look the the situation. I didn't get like a washroom or something up over there. We need washrooms down over here, maybe. And I was also thinking of doing maybe some more over here. But now that I look at it, now that I kind of think about the situation, I think we're fine over here. We will, though, need some more bins. Is uh, well, you know exactly. We know exactly why. Not a couple down over here. We'll need some ATMs and and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, security and stuff as well and I'll, I'll look into that but i'm i'm more interested right now in getting the uh the animal in here and just making sure uh that, like seeing what kind of limitations they have seeing what they do and don't like about the space seeing where they move seeing if guests come through you know the usual so let's go ahead and unpause here let's get the uh the animals uh done at quarantine so they can uh, move in over here and let's hope that the boats are we did yeah open it again so the riverboat ride is active again and what about uh i just want to make sure we're, we're, we're all good. The names are all good. Everything's all good. Okay, good. Fantastic. So yeah, the Nile monitors will arrive soon. We will proceed to monitor them to make sure they're all happy and everything's going okay. And uh, and then yeah, and we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll complete the space next time. I'm I'm I'm, I'm really I am really quite uh, quite happy with how that's come through. This was not at all what I had planned at first. The, my initial plan was a much more simple enclosure, uh, significantly more simple with just this like kind of like walkway you get to watch them down over here you got to watch them over there and then i was thinking this would kind of like loop around and uh, hook up back over here so so th this this area is i mean it wasn't going to look like this i wasn't going to have all this kind of stuff going on over here um i was likely going to have more of that over here but uh but yeah i'm i'm, I'm I, you know i really like this space up over here i really like the whole waterfall thing we had going from previously i, th I think it like ties in nicely very, very really really quite pleased with the uh with the space hey i'm visiting some folks visiting here i can't say hello to myself Little, I mean, I guess it's nice to be able to see yourself walking through a, a zoo. It looks like I literally just left. Didn't like being spotted there. I'm going to keep uh, all these hellos and highs. Oh, there I am, right at the bottom. Fair enough. What am I checking out right now? Coming through Llama Lane. All right, sounds good, sounds good. And how are our animals doing? Uh, over to quarantine. I just want to make sure that I didn't, by mistake, leave an animal at... Uh, <laughs> In an enclosure where they're not supposed to be. Uh, yeah, they're all three over here. Okay, great. So while we're waiting for them to to come through, why don't we go ahead and get some of these facilities in place? Because, oh, you know what? I should probably put up a do not feed sign, right? I say uh, but I mean quite a few. I should put up quite a few do not feed signs. And we will, of course, decorate the uh, the the, sh the stores as well. Once we have the overall structure made over here, it'll be a relatively modern structure. And it'll probably be one of the more modern looking spaces in uh, between both Elitsu North and South, actually, if I'm completely uh, frank. I feel like that's probably the, the, the situation we're looking at, uh, which is cool. I'm, uh, I'm excited to, again, experiment with something a little different, uh, something unlike anything I've done before. So it should be, should be a fun time. We'll probably, we'll, as we build the structure over here, as we build the uh, the building over here, we'll get some more security uh, cameras in as well. We just kind of want to like integrate them into this space. I'm really excited for this uh, for this structure because uh, again, I don't often build them. We've talked about this in the past. I don't often build like reptile houses and things like that. So I thought this would be an interesting uh, opportunity to do something like that. Um, but of course, you know, maybe maybe bit off more than I could chew uh, right off the bat. I'll have to experiment a bit more. If you have it, if you have any suggestions. With regards to uh, the execution I'm trying to do, feel free to, to you know let me know. 
uh, it's something I've always struggled with, which is, I guess, why I want to tackle it, right? You gotta, you gotta take those things you struggle with head on. So, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get past that struggle, and then we can, uh, do it more often, and, and experiment with that stuff more often. Where's the, uh, this is, this is hopefully not the quarantine. I guess the quarantine is the only thing that doesn't actually have an interior, eh? Yeah, I guess not. That's too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and get all three of you over to our enclosure and of course do not hesitate to provide some uh, enclosure name suggestions as well always always fun to go through the uh enclosure uh well to go through all name suggestions and, and pick them out well it's all it's always fun is the first half of it of seeing all the suggestions and then it boils down to like oh well now i gotta pick <laughs> it's always difficult to choose always difficult to choose now this atm is only out of power because this thing is i think uh, running low on power why don't we go ahead and move this atm over to this side that way it'll never uh Never have that issue. On topic of ATMs, let's go ahead and get some ATMs up over here as well. We will be recoloring the ATMs, I think, from time to time as well. I think especially here is probably, it'd be quite nice to, rather than have this, like, vibrant green. wonder where I could put you down. What if I put you down? Hmm. Can't put you down over here. There's so many, like, limitations for ATMs. For, like, for placeable objects. Uh, why don't we put you down where? Some guests are coming through before there's anything. It looks like they came through to pick up some food or something or some drinks. Yeah, drinks looks like it very well. Let's pop this down over here by the bin. And can I? What can I do in terms of colors here? Can I make it more kind of earth tones? Yeah. Be much better. Much better. Oh, much. So much better. Too red there. That's a little too light. I, I think that I think that works actually. And the light, unfortunately, the color doesn't really change. Well, we'll check. Like you can change this as well. We can make it like a yellow or something. But we'll we'll do it at night uh, because it does change the. Um, I I don't know rather if it changes the light that comes out below. Uh, I want to make sure it's the right color. If if it does. Where are these guys? Coming through soon. Oh, by the way, I should mention, if I didn't mention during the time lapse, uh, I will be having another staff area somewhere up over here in this general area. Uh, and that's why I've got the uh, the staff entrance over here uh, for these guys. Uh, it'll be it'll be a lot faster. It'll be a lot more convenient soon enough. Let's go ahead and make sure we have our work zone here determined properly. Uh, what is this? This would be Africa West. Yes. Keep reminding myself that it's not like West Africa. It is West as per my zoo's directions. There we go. And it looks like we're getting the first delivery over here. Cool. People are back to using the boats already. Excellent. I do hope to see a decent crowd up over here. I mean, I don't know how busy it'll get, but I feel like if we get some more food stuff over here and with some plans that I have for this area, and boy, do I have some plans, uh, I think we'll start getting some more traffic. It is absolutely wild, though, like to, to have this development happening even. It's just like... Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but to finally have it happening, it's, uh, it's it feels quite special. All right, let's see. You are able to come down over here. Excellent. This thing is not blocked, otherwise it would warn me, it would tell me. And there you have it. These guys are small. These guys are tiny. These guys are tiny. Oh, my God. Did not realize how tiny they were. Really hoping for something a little bit larger. This is way too big a space for them, but that just means we've, uh, we've maintained status quo for the Elite Zoos. Down you go. That's uh, probably not a good idea, buddy. You should probably... There we go. Straight into the water. They are quite beautiful. Now, hang on a second. Can you... Can you actually... Ooh, you might not be able to get over to the other side. Uh, habitat. Oh, you can. Not. Go over to the other side. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Not a problem, not a problem. We'll have to sort that out. The problem is this uh, hole is not uh, all enough. Fair enough, fair enough. I wonder if... That's going to get boxed up. Go ahead and pause for a second here. I'm not going to be able to do that. That's not a problem. We can probably get uh, another, like, escape route over here. I was actually contemplating that when I made this hole. Probably do. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and get rid of the water over here. See, now now that I've taken care of the water issue, just the fact that I never have to worry about it again is pleasant, <laughs> to say the least. 
let's do that. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these guys. And I think... Go do that. Alright. Uh, we have to adjust the hard shelter and stuff as well. Or will we? Yeah, we will. Because now that thing's submerged in water as well. Which I don't mind. I don't mind that. That's fine. But uh, we'll have to uh, to move their bedding and stuff. I doubt they'll want to sleep in the water, I, I, I suspect. question becomes, where do we put their uh, bedding? There's a couple spots, obviously. We, we might... Uh, I, again, since we're doing like a house kind of a thing, everything's going to be hard shelter, really. So we don't have to worry so much about that. Everything's going to be covered. We'll, we'll have some open air spaces, obviously. We'll want some ventilation and stuff like that. But where do we put this down? Hmm. How about something like... Not the biggest fan of that, obviously. It's a, more than a little messy looking. I'm not liking that. We'll find a good spot for it. Put it down over here. We can move these things over a little bit. Oh. You really need to flatten that much uh, terrain around you. If we do that, okay. Why don't we move this thing? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me <laughs> move that over here. Move this over here. All right. So now they should definitely have access across the board here, and hopefully they'll want it. Looks like looks like Buddy does want to get out there. We have some escape routes, apparently. I don't know how you can get up there. Oh, I see. I see how. Oh. Could be a relatively easy fix. Again, this thing will be a custom piece afterwards. For the purposes of today's time lapse and getting something accomplished, I wanted to just temp something in so we'd know what the structure would be like. Honestly, this is way too large a space for these animals. I did not realize the scale at which I was making stuff. But again, that's, I guess, par for the course, right? You still have an escape route? No, you do not. All right, great. Oh, you do up over here. Uh, let's go. That's an easy fix, though. More of these reeds down. We'll put down some rocks and stuff as well. Right behind it after we've uh, figured out exactly how the pathing is going to work. That should do it. What kind of terrain do these guys want? I imagine they want more grass and whatnot. But we're about to find out. A gorilla about to mature. Take a look at that. If it causes problems, come on, buddy. Let me, let me, let me pick you. There we go. Uh, decently happy. The terrain, there are some issues. Not enough rock. Too much grass. Oh, okay. Interesting. I was expecting it to go the other way around. So, sure, let's go ahead and... In fact, during the time lapse, I believe I did take it the other way around. Let's add some more rock over here. Reduce the intensity a bit, maybe. Oh, look at that golden hour over here. Reduce your size. Up the intensity, perhaps. Make this out of rock. Not enough, eh? Oh, interesting. I was not expecting that. I'll tell you that much. Considering the uh, the biomes they're from, but hey, all good, all good. There we go. Make this into rock as well. Can we make some of this into rock? Yeah, we can definitely. Come on now. Size, uh, bigger intensity. I feel like it makes sense for this stuff to be rock as well. There we go. Increasing some of that grass still. That short grass. Alright, good stuff, good stuff. Add some more rock over here. Because then what we can do is over here make some of this into soil. go. Good stuff. Good stuff. I think these guys are going to be a challenge. Oh. oh, you know what? I quite, this is quite nice. <laughs> like the way they can kind of like snake through here. That is quite nice. Pretty pleased with this space overall. Look at the lighting. Look at that like blue shine off the top of their head. Oh, that's great. Off in the distance, we got the stores. Oh, you know what? This is, um, 
This is pretty good. I would you I would totally make this like the thumbnail, but you can probably barely tell what's going on at thumbnail size, like what's going on over here. That's beautiful too. Don't want to turn the flashlight on because it's like, well, that kind of loses some of its beauty. Actually, you know what? Not entirely. That the golden the, the stripes are just absolutely spectacular to look at. Yeah, look at that. Oh, buddy. Really beautiful. Look at that tail, though. They weren't kidding. With a long tail. Buddy coming out over here. Put that flashlight off. Look, it's just so beautiful in the natural lighting. Just so beautiful. And I'm glad they're actually swimming out over here. That was one of my concerns, was that maybe they wouldn't swim out here so much. Be too stuck on the other side, but no, they are definitely swimming over here. Ugh, flashlight looks. It's the the back walls too much. The the, the back um. The back uh, like soil and whatnot. They're such interesting looking creatures. The coloration is just gorgeous. Sorry, I... I, <laughs> I really enjoy observing the animals. It's also been forever, thanks to uh, global events, since I've been able to go out and uh, do a bit of photography. I, I, I enjoy doing photography, so this is my kind of like pseudo-escape and opportunity to like just mess around with angles and compositions. And obviously because it's a video game, it's not the same as... Uh, being out there, but it's like get that golden hour again. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That. Wait. Look at that. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Give me that angle. Just that spot of red. Beautiful. Really wish I could like fine tune move the camera. Don't <laughs> problem with video game cameras. One of many. Uh, the, 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 light, the lighting in this game is absolutely ridiculous. So good. Look at that. Beautiful. It's so red over here. Why is it so so very red? Looks like we have an escape. I'm assuming it's a gorilla. Oh no, it's one of these guys. I thought you couldn't escape. Hey buddy, how'd you get up here? Time to uh time to not be up here anymore. Both of you. They're not dangerous. They're fine. They're fine. We gotta chill. Yeah, I see we got some alpha fighting over here. What are we looking at? Ogbonna. Oh, whoa, whoa. Go ahead and get you into... Oh my god. Yikes. Well, one of them has clearly established themselves as the alpha. But, yikes, that was... There's something very compelling about uh, about gorillas expressing their their uh, their status. Let's put it that way. I think I've expressed before how much I find uh, gorillas quite fascinating, and just like absolutely, just magnificent is the word um, I like to use. What is? Oh, you're able to get up over here. How you weren't you weren't able to before? All right. I don't know how brain was adjusted by us. Removing the grass, I guess. If that does the trick. I could have sworn we didn't have any escape routes. But uh, it's very possible that I was mistaken. There we go. Much better. Yeah, we just had the one over here that we plugged up, but... All good. All good. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. Here comes the sun. Going for a nice morning dip. 
Nothing like a nice morning dip. All right, here we go. Yeah. Look, a beautiful game, man. It is a beautiful game. Wish the camera would work with me a bit better. It gets uh, extra kind of choppy when uh, when you have too many like parts and pieces and, and, and whatnot and it like drops the frame rate. It's a bit choppier. Now monitors are flickering. Eh? I'm really excited for this space. I'm excited for the experiment. I'm excited to see if it uh, if it works out. If it doesn't, that's fine. I'm already pretty pleased with uh, with the overall overall like form of the space and all that. So, not too fussed about you know. Like I I won't be too bothered if the structure idea doesn't work out. Like I said right before the, the time lapse as well, right? It's like it's a risk that I'm willing to take. It seems they're a lot more likely to go out that way than they are to just kind of chill over here, and I'm fine with that. An observation, really. Very, such an interesting oat skin, whatever you'd like to call it. We got to get those education boards up as well, right? Well, we have to get all the education boards up, of course. But uh, I mean the uh, the ones about like traditional medicine and all that kind of stuff. But folks, that and more will wait until next time. This is, we're going to call it a session. I feel like this was a fairly, uh, yeah, fairly, fairly, fairly uh, progress-filled session. I mean... It is really wild to see, yeah, this all starting to come together now. I've got plans for up over here. we got plans. i got to hear from, from, from more of you about the whole penguin situation. Again, some of y'all suggested we put the penguins in South America. Some of y'all suggested we do it in Australia. It wouldn't be Australia or South America. It would be like an offshoot of. Um, and that's, it's not necessarily the next animal. They just kind of came up because I was talking about future plans. But like, South America also makes more sense. They are more close to South America or even Africa, really, which this area would cover, than they are to Australia. That was a bit of a stretch. Um, and, in fact, it, it straight up says South America over here. So South America, I guess, gets some more attention. Uh, I guess we'd uh, we'd probably put them down over here in this corner. Uh, not say, Again, not saying that's the next animal that I'm planning on doing. Again, I've got a couple of plans for up over here. And, I mean, i got plans for everywhere. But up over here, I have some pressing plans as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's the penguin conversation, which I suppose will happen down over here. It was mentioned in the comments as well, was given some references. So I just wanted to throw it out there. But I guess uh, I guess I was going to ask, you know, here or here. But I suppose here is, uh, is, is what would make most sense based on the information the game gives us. Fair enough. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this session, though. Next session, we'll be back and we'll be hopefully completing that enclosure and creating yet another sort of landmark kind of a thing up over there. And we'll just need to remember to try and mirror that a bit more on this side as well. As we expand over here, we should try and build more such spaces that uh that that uh, like we have i mean obviously this is huge that's uh that's another one as well but there's a difference between you know a a more natural looking landmark and uh, a more kind of like built i guess constructed looking landmark uh so something to, something to consider as we move forward to bring a bit of a balance to the uh the overall zoo but i hope you enjoyed the session if you did you know what to do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below as always makes a massive difference in how i approach content on the channel what i do more or less of again y'all know the drill by now as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.